All right, here we go with uh, assignment 7H. This is uh, some uh, integrals uh, that just in essence are starting to use some more uh, trig than anything else. Um, but in essence, we're defining areas of regions, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so here they just want us to set up a definite integral. We don't actually have to solve it. Um, and so uh, all we have to do is just set this up. So here's the region. And so I noticed that our zigzag line, which is our sine line, is over our uh, uh, curvy line, which is this x to the third line. So um, we see that it intersects at 2. So here we go. So this area is going to be defined by the integral from 0 to 2 of uh, sine pi x minus the x to the third, excuse me, I should probably group this up, minus 4x. as such. Um, I'm not sure if they want it written like that or if they want you to simplify it just a little bit and that would be pi x minus x to the x squared plus 4x. Okay, either way, uh, that is how you would set it up and there it is. That would be the area right there. Uh, whether you solve it analytically or in a calculator, that would get you the correct answer. Okay, here uh, we have two different regions. We have this region right here, this region right here. Um, it, but I notice that they're the exact same because they're the odds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, find the area of just half of it and then multiply by two, all right? And so this one is just this curvy line all the way to the axes. So it's just the integration of this from zero to two, and then just double it. Okay, sorry. So two times this area. Okay. That's what it is. Okay, find the area of the region, sketch the bounded region, the graphs, uh, the equations, find the area of the region. All right. So let me use my calculator. Uh, so 6 minus 1 half x squared and 3 fourths x. That'll get started at least. So there's that. There's that. Negative 2 to 2. All right, so we have this wide parabola it goes out a little bit wider than usual. We have this line cutting up through, and we are going from negative 2, which is before the intersection, so that's a good thing, going from negative 2 to positive 2, which again is before that intersection, which is good. And so we are asked to find, sketch the region bounded by the graphs, find the area of the region. All right, so this region is purely red over, um, red over blue from negative 2 to 2. The red is the parabola, so that's the 6 minus the x, 1 half x squared, minus the line, which is 3 fourths x. I think we are asked, asked to actually get this answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do one simplification step and then let's go to work. So this is ultimately negative 1 half x squared minus 3 fourths x plus 6 dx, negative 2 to 2. So this is x to the third, so that would be negative one-sixth. Uh, this is x squared, so this is negative three-eighths, and six x. Negative two to two. All right, come on, calculator, don't fail me now. 
So two goes into my calculator, negative one sixth, x to the third, minus three eighths, x squared, plus six x, uh, six, and then whatever the answer to negative two is, negative 73, six. And so the difference of these Four thirds. Like All right, this one, um, I don't think we are quite equipped to know exactly how you get your answer. So I'll show you. Um, the way that we're going to, in essence, learn in, in a couple different lessons, it has to do with deal with inverse trigonometry, um, uh, integrals of inverse trigs, um, and then. But I'll also show you how you can get kind of get the answer on your calculator if you get in a pinch. All right, so here we go. Uh, so this uh, is one divided by the quantity of x squared plus one. Okay, so it's this little bump looking thing. Let's see if I can kind of get in here to kind of show you what this looks like. Okay, so it's this uh, kind of a bell shaped curve kind of, kind of concept. Uh, and it goes, and negative one would be right about here, positive one would be right about here. Um, and we want to know the area in between those two. All right, so I'll show you the analytic way. Again, you probably don't know how to do this uh, it, unless you use the front of your book or if you took a calculus course somewhere that I, <laughs> I'm not sure of, that you're, uh, you kind of know what's going on with uh, some inverse trig stuff. All right. So let's just set this up. So this is going to be the integral from negative one to one of x squared plus one as a denominator dx. All right, so uh, again, getting into this, uh, this idea, if you check out the front of your book, you'll see that we'll, there's going to be an equation where we're able to set this up as an integral of a squared plus u squared du. And if we do that, we are going to be able to uh, accomplish an integral that would be 1 over a, the inverse tangent of u over, oops, excuse me, inverse tangent, or tangent, of u over a um, plus c. But th this is going to be a definite integral, so we're going to evaluate. So this is kind of, this is the idea that I'm going to run off of. So what I really am thinking about when I see this problem and I know these tricks um, is I kind of think of this denominator as just being in the inverse order, so in the opposite order. So this is 1 plus x squared. It's the same idea as x squared plus 1. All right, so what I see in this particular problem is that my a squared is the number 1. That implies a is equal to 1. I see my u squared is equal to x squared. That means u is equal to x, and the du is equal to 1 dx, so it's all good. Think of the kind of u substitution idea. Also, in the u substitution idea, this implies that 1 remains to be the number 1, and negative 1 remains to be the number negative 1. Okay, so doing all of these uh, substitutions, this integral turns into be negative 1, 1 of a squared plus u squared divided by 1 du. It's exactly the setup 
as we see above. So this is indeed an, uh, an inverse tangent. So the result of this is going to be 1 over a, which is 1, inverse tangent of u over a, which is x over 1. Or excuse me, it has to remain the letter u because I did the substitution. And this is being evaluated from negative 1 to 1. Okay, now again, we, we haven't really studied inverse trigonometry all that much, um, so I'll kind of give the quick version of this. So let's go ahead and plug in our values. The one value that we have to plug in is the 1. So this is going to be the inverse tangent of 1. And I say that is equal to theta. Theta. I always use the theta because if I take the tangents of both sides, which I'm going to, that's going to leave 1 is equal to the tangent of theta. And this is typically how we look at trigonometry problems. So the tangent of some angle is equal to something. So I need to know what is this angle in which the tangent is equal to 1, aka where is sine over cosine the exact same thing. And that's going to occur at pi over 4. Okay? That's where sine and cosine are the exact same thing, square root of 2 over 2. And so sine over cosine is the exact same thing. Thus, for tangent to be equal to 1, you are looking at a pi over 4. Similarly, if I'm taking an inverse tangent of negative 1, okay, that implies that the tangent is equal to negative 1. And so I need the sine and cosine to be the exact same thing, but negative. And so that's going to occur at negative pi over 4. That's going to occur at negative pi over 4. Again, stand by. We are absolutely going to do these problems in a future assignment. Um, but that's what this is. All right, so this is going to be pi over 4 minus negative pi over 4, thus pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is pi over 2. Okay, that is the answer. Now, again, I totally understand if you don't understand what I just did. I like, because again, we haven't done any of this stuff yet. We haven't like even come close. All right, we are going to in the next couple lessons, um, but we aren't quite there just yet. So how the heck, what the heck would you do in the situation if you didn't know things? All right, well, I would just straight up plug it into my calculator. You're not going to get the prettiest of answers. Well, you could if you kind of knew what the answer is going to be in the first place. But I would just go math 9 of 1 divided by, again, don't forget to put the quantity of on this 1 plus x squared. Okay. So that's what I'm taking an integral of with respect to x from negative 1 to 1. Ta-da. That's probably what I would do. Like, it, not knowing things, and I need to get an answer, I have a calculator that is brilliant at mathematics. That's 1.5708. All right? I don't know if it's good enough if I divide by pi. Oh, shoot, yeah, it does come straight out to be 1 half. So if I divide that by pi, that implies that this is, yes, one-half pi. Okay, which is the actual answer. So right now, I'm kind of expecting you to do what's written in black. However, uh, coming up, we are going to be able to do what is written in uh, red and, uh, blue and red. I don't think the other questions are quite this difficult. I think that one's... I don't know how that snuck onto this assignment. <laughs> All right, uh, so here we go. Next one. Um, we have uh, x to the third, which swoops up like that, and we have an x, which it cuts it. Okay, and so the area bounded again is a double area that is bounded. However, because they're both odd, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the area of one side and then just double it. 
Um, so where is x equal to x to the third is in essence also the question. So what I'm going to do is I am going to get everything to one side, factor out an x, and so I get results that are zero and positive and negative one. So that's where all three of these intersections would occur at negative one, zero, and positive one. Okay, I'm just going to uh, focus on where zero is, x is zero and positive one. And again, I'm just going to double that intersection and it's going to be the blue over the red. <clears throat> so this area that they're asking for is the, in, uh, excuse me, two times, there's two of them, two uh, from the integral from zero to one of the blue, which is the line, over the red, which is the x to the third. All right, so that is defining the area. Um, so this is what, x squared, one half, x to the fourth, one fourth, from zero to one. Uh, so this is one half minus one fourth, which is going to be one fourth. And then times two is going to be one half. Into the E's. All right, and E to the X looks like a skateboard ramp. E to the two, excuse me, is uh, just uh, a line. So this is why Z put the E to the two, so it would be here. Uh, and an X is equal to zero, which is right here. All right, so this is the area. Now, I typically would go right to left, but I don't want to really mess up with my equations. Uh, I know that this intersection obviously occurs at x is equal to 2. Um, and uh, this is obviously 0. Now, again, what I'm saying is typically I would integrate this way, but I, I don't want to re-manipulate um, my equation because what would happen if I solve this for x is I would end up with the ln of y is equal to x. And I am not good at integrating the ln of y. I'm not good at that. Um, what I'm good at is I can integrate e to the x pretty well. So I'm going to keep it the way that it is, which means I'm integrating up and down. Okay. So, uh, with that being said, this is going to be uh, the integral of the top, which is technically the, um, the red line, so that is e to the 2, which is just a number, it's just a number, minus uh, the bottom, which is e to the x. Okay, that will get us the area that we want. So that's the red line minus the blue line. So e to the two is just a number. So when I integrate this, this will just slap an x on there. e to the x integral is still e to the x. All right, plugging in the two, this is two e to the two, uh, whatever that is, uh, minus e to the two, Okay, that's the two minus the zero, which would be zero minus e to the zero, which is one. So e to the two minus e to the two is one e to the two minus is plus one. So this is e to the two plus one. All right, sine of x uh, looks like this. Okay, 
from 0 to 2 pi. So this is what, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, uh, excuse me, as you would. This is pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over, excuse me, 3 over 2 pi. And then 2 pi. So 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 5 fourths is where we're going to stop right there. And then a cosine looks like this. It starts at 1, ends at 1. So the middle is the complete opposite there and passes in between. So we are going from pi over 4, which is this intersection right here, to 5 pi over 4, which is this intersection down here. So this entire time, sine is over the cosine of this entire area. So this area is going to be the integral from pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4 of the top, which is the sine minus the bottom, which is the cosine. Okay, the integral of sine is negative cosine. Cosine is straight up sine from uh, pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4. Okay, let's round up a unit circle here and let's do some math. So the numbers in question, the places that we need to know about is uh, pi over 4, which has the coordinate square root 2 over 2, square root 2 over 2, and 5 pi over 4, um, which is over here, and that is negative square root 2 over 2, square root 2 over 2. Again, cosine is the x, sine is the y. So plugging in the 5 pi over 4, uh, the cosine is a negative version of that, uh, so that is going to be okay, here. 5 pi over 4, so this is going to be positive square root 2 over 2 minus the sine, which is square root 2 over 2, minus um, the uh, pi over 4 which is going to be uh, negative square root 2 over 2 minus the sine, which is positive, so square root 2 over 2. So this cancels out to 0. This is uh, 1 square root 2, right? negative 1 square root 2, which is, the negative turns it into a positive. So this is going to be a positive square root 2. I hope. <laughs> oh, shoot, I can check it. I'm going to check it right here, right now. Just, just a quadruple check. So what I'm integrating is I'm doing a math 9 of sine x uh, minus cosine x. Uh, with respect to x from pi over 4 uh, to 5 pi over 4. And let's hope that this is the square root of 2, which is not obvious.
Oh, shoot. I know why. Because I'm dumb. That's why. Nailed it. <laughs> this is not 5 pi over 4. So I'm an idiot. Um, uh, that's 3 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4 is negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. That's, what, that's where I'm making a huge mistake. All right, so uh, sorry. Um, looking at 5 pi over 4, so negative negative is going to be a positive square root of 2 over 2. Um, and then sine is a negative, so this is going to be another positive. So uh, this is, in essence, square root 2 uh, minus negative square root 2. And thus, this is going to be 2 square root 2. And so I'm assuming this 2.8 is 2 square root 2. It better be in there. Hooray, there it is. It's 2 square root 2. Okay, uh, use a disk or shell method of the volume to sell a generator around the other. Okay, um, so here we go. Um, let's just take a look at what kind of area we have, what kind of picture we have. So we have y is equal to x or x is equal to y, however you may want to look at it. We have a y is equal to 0, so y is equal to 0, and then x is equal to 3. x is equal to 3 right here. Okay, so this is the area that is defined, and this is most easily probably done uh, by integrating up and down in a dx kind of method from 0 to 3. So I'm going to kind of keep that uh, squared away and then just make my decisions of either being a disk or a shell as I go along. Okay, so the first one is about the x-axis. So x-axis is a dx, dx, dx. That's great. That's going to be the disk method. So the disk method, the volume is going to be uh, pi from 0 to 3 of uh, the radius, which in this case is going to be x squared dx, so pi r squared kind of idea. So this is going to be x squared, so this is going to be 1 third Next, all right, next they're setting us up with the y. So this is kind of like a dy, so these do not match. Thus, I am going to do the shell method in this case. So that means you have to have a front 2 pi, but then you pretty much, you kind of do it the same way, but you have to have that like x that you could potentially manipulate. Okay, this is the exact same problem as the, well, not the exact same problem, I take that back. Um, so this is x squared, 0, 3, 2 pi, uh, dx, so this is x to the third, 1 third makes that a 2 thirds from 0 to 3, so it's going to be 27, uh, divided by 3 is 9 times 2 is 18. Okay, the next one is about, uh, about x is equal to 3. So x is equal to 3 is right here, but long story short, that's a dy. So again, this is going to be the shell method. 
um, in which I have to um, manipulate uh, the new axes. And again, uh, referring to the previous one, that's where I manipulate it, right there. Um, so here we go. The volume in this case is going to be 2 pi integral 0, 3. Um, and then if x is a number between 0 and 3, I need this to be positive. I want to take 3 minus x. That way, that way if x is between 0 and 3, that remains positive. The function, and this is going to be dx. Okay, so this is 3x minus x squared. So this is 3 over 2x squared minus 1 third x third, 3 pi, <clears throat> 3, 3 going in, so this is 3 over 2x to the second, uh, minus 1 third x to the third. 9 over 2, so times 2, this is going to be 9 and a half. All right, next idea is uh, x is equal to 3. Or excuse me, x is equal to 6. Okay, so again, this is a dy. Um, so again, they don't match. So I, again, I'm going to be doing the shell method. Uh, just make sure you integrate across the, the proper distance. All right, so this is going to be 2 pi from 0 to 3 still. Uh, this is going to be 6 minus x, because um, x is still a number of 0 to 3, so that will be positive. Uh, the function is x, and this is dx. So very similar to what we just got done doing, um, just a bigger number on that x. So x squared, so this is 3x squared, 1 third x to the third. 0 to 3, pi, so 3 again into my calculator. This is 3x squared minus 1 third x to the third. That's straight up 18 minus 0, 2 pi, so this is what, 36 pi. Again, this looks like an inverse trig problem. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see, though. Uh, yeah, this is this is an inverse trig. Again, I would probably get this answer via my calculator because, again, we are not trained uh, to get these uh, these numbers really any other way um, right right now. I haven't really done too much inverse trig. So, but let's go ahead and understand it. I'll show you how to do it. And then, um, again, you can do it kind of how you did the other problem where you just use your calculator and you integrate. All right, so we're forced into pretty much integrating up and down star, all right? Uh, it doesn't really make sense to do it side to side. Um, so we are integrating uh, this from the world of what? Um, y is equal to 0. x is equal to 0. x is equal to 1. Okay, so only part of it. But that's 
that's neither here nor there. We are need to get that area right there. Um, again, yeah, the the best way to do this one is again up and down style, which is a dx method. However, they want us to revolve this around the y axis, which is a dy method. So they don't match. So that is going to be a um, <clears throat> a shell method. All right, so here we go. We integrate up and down. So that integration up and down is going to be the integral from zero to one of this. Now I'll already make this the, the crossover. Um, so that is the function. Now how do I turn this into the shell method? All right. So there is going to be an additional x on here. Okay, there's going to be an additional x on here, dx, and a 2 pi up front. Okay, so this is I'm going to get crazy here real quick. Actually, no. All right, so here I'll explain everything. Here we go. So what I'm recognizing this as, what I know is this. If I integrate a squared plus u squared du, that is going to be equal to 1 over a inverse tangent of u over a plus c, but because this is a definite integral, I won't get that plus c. All right. So making this comparison to what I have right here, I see that a squared is equal to 1. So that implies that a is equal to 1. Okay, big deal. Okay, u squared is equal to x to the fourth. That means u is equal to 4 the edge of it. Yes, no, u is equal to x squared. Okay, du is 2x dx. So in other words, dx is equal to 1 over dx is equal to 1 over 2x du. And so all I'm going to do is just make some big old substitutions here in just a moment. Uh, going to the reevaluation of my limits. So once I go u, I don't go back. Uh, so 1 is still 1, 0 is still 0. All right, so here we go, substitution time about what I'm substituting and not substituting. All right, so things that are temporarily going to remain the same are these guys right here. Those are temporarily going to remain the same, but I'm going to be uh, substituting it in new limits, kind of. That's going to get substituted, and that's going to get substituted. So what this new equation is going to look like, let's choose a different color, let's go with purple. So this is going to be 2 pi integral 0 to 1. I, I know the limits stay the same. I said that I was going to change it, but I did it. Um, so this, this I'm seeing as a squared plus u squared over 1. I'm just helping my brain out here just a little bit. Let me shrink this down just a touch. Uh, and uh, dx, dx is being substituted with 1 over 2x du. Okay, so again, long story short, I need to accomplish this. So if that is not exactly perfect, the exact same way, I'm sorry, out of luck. All right, but luckily, they're setting us up pretty well. So I see that in X cancellation, X cancellation, and now I can just GCF out this one half. So this is going to be pi because I took out the one half. So two, one half, integral zero to one, 
of a squared plus u squared over 1 du. Array, that is exactly what I needed and wanted. So this a squared uh, fraction thing is going to be, this is 1 over a inverse tangent of u over a, uh, again, plus c, but this is going to be evaluated on the universe of 0 to 1, and then there's a pi along for the ride. Okay, so resubstituting in some of these numbers. a is 1. Uh, so 1 over a doesn't really do anything. u over a doesn't do anything. And I am not turning the u back into an x because I made the conversion of my limits. Okay, so now I plug in the 1. So this is going to leave me with an inverse tangent of 1. So I usually set that equal to theta. So that implies that tangent of theta is equal to 1. That occurs when the angle is pi over 4. Okay, and then what I'm thinking about when I do these things is what are these various angles? Okay, where is, and again, tangent is sine over cosine. Where is sine the same thing as cosine? And that it exists at a pi over 4 and Again, we'll get into it, a negative pi over 4. That's where they're equal to 1. All right, so the evaluation at 1 is pi over 4. The evaluation at 0, so where is the inverse tangent? 0. So that means the tangent is equal to 0. So that means the sine is 0 and the cosine is something else. Sine is the y coordinate. That is going to occur at zero. And so this ultimately is uh, pi squared divided by four. Again, right now, I'm pretty sure that you don't have the ability to pack that kind of gear. Um, so what I would uh, do if I were you is, again, cheat. I go math 9 integral of x um, times 1 divided by 1 plus x to the fourth uh, with respect to x from 0 to 1. Beep, bop, boop, beep, times 2 pi. There it is. That's, that's pretty much what I do, which is pi squared divided by 4. All right. 